the next breakthrough will be your own. No, he said, he said, as he had that breakthrough, he said, no, 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 no. This thing may be a test. Let me go and pay my tithe. Grace to lead. That's part what now? Part four. Is it part four? Part three. No, part four. I did first service, second service, third service was that one. Okay. So now it is part three. Glory to God. Now we'll be doing identifying a leader. Identifying a leader. True leaders don't look like it. True leaders, genuine leaders, leaders that are made don't look like it. You may see them and despise them. There is somebody now that uh, when he comes into this place with shot. Before you know it, the whole system is transformed. He is not in the position. Neither does he look like it. He's not in dressing. No. It brings a drastic change into the system. This is interesting. Number one, leaders have weaknesses. Leaders have weaknesses. So, most times, we are deceived to identify a leader because of his weakness. But that does not nullify the fact that the person is a leader. They have weaknesses. Shortcomings. Now please listen. A man made a statement so powerful. He said, when you are following a leader, Close your eyes to his weaknesses and open your eyes to his strength. You are following him for something. That should be where your focus is. Come on now. Am I talking to someone here right now? That should be where your focus is. If you capitalize and focus on the weaknesses of a leader, you will miss out. Of his leadership. Sir, where again in the Bible did you hear about Miriam? No place. Aaron and Miriam began to murmur and began to complain. That as God speaks to Moses, that is the way God speaks to them. Because, uh, and do you know why they were saying that? Because he married an Ethiopian woman. Excuse me, please look up. God saw it that he married an Ethiopian woman and still anointed him. God 
and graces a leader in spite of his weakness. After that picture, you never heard of Aaron again. That was where Aaron signed out. Sir, so, if there was anybody who was expecting to take over from Moses, it should be Aaron. Because Aaron was his spokesman. Aaron was his prophet. Aaron was his oracle. Aaron was his interpreter. But that way, that was where they missed it. Hello? I'm praying for you. You will not be disqualified for any good thing. Just like in church. You came to church because of something. There is a strength. There is a glory you saw on the man of God. And suddenly your focus shifted. Now on the weakness of the man of God. If your amen is heavy, then your blessing will be heavy. Now, watch this. From today, I decree that you will not lose the reward of your followership. The mantle went on one man. The PA, the PA. The PA of the man of God called Moses. His name is Joshua. The Bible said every time Moses went up the mountain to meet with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights, that Joshua was there. Excuse me. That means invariably that every time Moses fasted 40 days, 40 nights, Joshua did the same. Am I talking to somebody here right now? Because he was, he was always at the foot of the mountain. He was at the foot of the mountain. While the leader goes up. He was at the foot of the mountain, not minding the weaknesses of the leader. Excuse me. Is that, is that not wickedness? You go to fire fast 40 days, 40 nights, and then you leave a man at the foot of the mountain? There, are, there were no supermarkets at the foot of the mountain where you can get something to eat. So if the man was fasting, this one was fasting. He was enduring hunger. And nobody heard about him. Do you know nobody heard about Joshua? Nobody heard about him. Until when we heard, and the Lord said unto Moses, call this man, call Joshua, and lay your hands about him. Now, the Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, put it there quickly. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, that's the time his name came up. The first time was when God asked Moses in Numbers to lay his hands upon him and impart honor upon him. There is no leader without a witness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take Joshua and put upon him some of your honor by laying your hands upon him. Glory to God. I can't hear you. Glory to God. Oh, good. Numbers. Numbers, oh, permit me, 27, and verse 18, and the Lord said unto, unto Moses, take thee Joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay thy hand upon him, the next one. And set him before Eleazar, 
the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thy honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may, do, may be what? I want you to cast something. Maybe what? No. Maybe what? That means if you take the position without this impartation, nobody will obey you. There is something that makes people obey you. You don't get it in the Bible school. It does not come with suit. Your title can give it to you. Somebody has to give you some. <laughs> Come on now. Am I talking to somebody here right now? He said, he said uh, 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 I, can, I can pastor that church. Uh, uh, if the man of God is not there, if I take over, I can pastor it. They will give you the position and everybody will leave. Is anybody hearing my voice here right now? He said, I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have message. I have message. No, it's not message. You can be preaching the message and it will be sounding like a mess in the ears of the people because you don't have what he carries that makes the people hear him and obey him. And today, somebody whose heart is genuine, I want to put some honor on you. Whatever that makes doors open for me, whatever that makes glory to answer to me, today I put it upon you. Put some honor. That was where we began to hear of Joshua. He said, take Joshua. Peter was following Jesus. Jesus said, oh yeah, come, come. Don't mind the wind. Come, come, come. And he was moving. As his eyes shifted, he began to sing. Tell your neighbor, remove your eyes. From that place. You know my weakness now? You know that my calling scripture and it's misquoted can be a weakness. Don't capitalize it. No. No, my. No, my. Kara boy, what a past time. That boy better be a quote scriptures. What a past time. Let that boy become a pastor. He can quote 66 scriptures at a time. I say, okay. Remove your eyes. The weakness of the man can be that he doesn't. He doesn't take care of his wife well. <laughs> yes, it's possible the man of God does not take care of his wife very well. But the question is, is he carrying the anointing? That's where your eyes will be. Eh? Eh? Yes, life. Life. This time it's not uh, life. You know, you can say, Pastor Chris, how can he be a, a divorcee? And he's still ministering. Do you know why those people are still with him? They have trained them. They have taught them not to put their eyes on what does not concern them. Yes, sir. I don't know whether I'm, I'm making any sense here. Tell your neighbor, it does not concern you. <laughs> Remove your eyes from there. That's not why you came. The wife is his own, not your own. Oh, nobody heard my voice right now. Hello! Now, you know, anyone who poses to love a man's wife more than his husband is a suspect. And any woman that poses to love a woman, huh? a man, a woman's husband more than the woman, Call that woman for, for a meeting. So what, excuse me, what's in your mind? You know, sometimes it's very funny what we hear and see on the internet. I think they say there is one, a doche issue. I'm not looking at you people. Am I correct of what I'm saying? What's the name again? Uh -huh. Then what's the name of the woman? Then what's the name of the new one? Uh -huh. The new one is what? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
So some people are very angry with the man. Eh? Are you one of them? <laughs> Somebody say yes. Wait till concern you there. No, wait. Wait till concern you. Is the woman your sister? Or what? Wait till concern you. The other day I was, I was, I was, I was watching, I was watching, uh, reading some comments made, you know, by some people. I just laugh. How people can be busybodies about another man's business. You know, there are people who don't like me till now because I'm married. You're not talking now. Be pretending. <laughs> people who are angry, angry with me, say, why would you go and marry? <laughs> and they are not my sisters. And they are not my, my brothers. <laughs> the easiest way to be beheaded is to be defocused. <laughs> I will tell you something now. And I will close you. I will close the service. I will not close you. I will close the service. I am here to open you up. Praise the Lord. The easiest way to be beheaded, like John the Baptist, is to be dead. <laughs> That's why that comment came. Now hear this. The introduction of John the Baptist was, there is a voice crying in the wilderness whose name is John. True of us? No, no, no. I like, I like, I like a lively chorus answer. True of us? There was a voice crying in the wilderness whose name is John. So where is his voice supposed to be in the wilderness? The day he left the wilderness and cried and talked about what was happening in the palace in Wadishia, The easiest way to be beheaded is to be difficult. He was talking about Herod going to marry somebody's wife. Now, he, now, now that's when they send you go talk. They, wait till they send you talk. We say, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And not everywhere. In the wilderness. Because the Bible says he was in the wilderness and everybody was coming from every place to come and meet him where he was. True of us. He now shifted focus. Put his mouth in palace matters. On a... One day we went for a conference and they put me in a hotel. They put me in a hotel. And told me that everyone in the hotel, that he'll be paired with somebody. And they brought another man of God to stay with me. The guy started asking me some sensitive questions about the man of God, Pastor David B. He started asking me because I told him, sir, I don't know. 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 Even I was praying, oh God, let me find another place to stay. I now targeted the guy. Every time the conference is over, I try to do something that will not permit him to discuss with me until the conference ended. You know what? The man of God was not there with us. But that was the last time I saw him there. What he was asking me does not concern me. Even if I know it is not my business, are you hearing my voice right now? Not my business. Put. <laughs> I was with a man of God like this. Life. Me and him were discussing. In his house, we were talking. And somebody related to him came out. And started insulting him. Insulting, don't be small one, no. Insulting him. 
I was just there. The man stood up. If you don't go out from here, I'll slap you. That one rant, rant, rant. I just kept quiet, just like. Somebody said, you, you can't you separate them? I don't have the ministry. <laughs> By the time they were through, and I finished with him, I knelt down. Pray for me. And the man laid hands. I had him say, if I slap you, I say, lay hands. Look at the Bible. I don't have time. The book, the book of Luke. He says, which of you, when your child asks you for an egg, will give him a stone? Which, please listen, which of you, when your, your child asks you for fish, you give him a serpent? Which of you, which means, listen, 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 I want to communicate something to you. This is a key for impartation. People don't know. He said, which of you, when they ask you for, a, for bread, you give this. He says, so shall your heavenly father give you the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? In impartation, it is what you ask for that will be given to you. You can't ask for another thing and another will be given. So when you go, even if the man has bad character, it is what you want that will be given to you. I hope you know that Elijah had a very hot temper. Elijah was a very hot tempered man. But only this boy followed him for the spirit that he saw. And as he got it, he didn't get hot temper. I don't know whether you heard my voice. But when the devil wants to trick you out of what you want, he will capitalize on the weakness. Weakness of the leader. Weakness. And then you shift. You miss out. That was the secret that made Bishop Oedipo drink Archbishop Idahosa like water. He said, others came looking at my weakness. But you kept your eyes on my strength. It is this man's strength that you went for. Half on a wine. That's the same way I was going to a man of God's house and then somebody met me on the street and said, what are, you, what are you doing here? I said, I'm going to that man of God's house. He said, to do what? I said, I came to see him. He said, stop going there. Don't you think that, don't you know that people will think you are doing what he's doing? I said, what is he doing? He said, he has done it to me. He has done it to me. He has done it to me. On the main road. He has done it to me. And I went there. And I have maintained that relationship for years. And it has paid off. It has paid off. It has paid off. It has paid off. I didn't go for Ometolamia. <laughs> Ometolamia. It has it has Praise the Lord. You know, there are some teachings Jesus will teach, and he will tell the people he's teaching that this is a hard saying. These are one of the hard sayings of leadership. You get a job in a company. They employ you. You are there for your job and for your pay. Remove your eyes from what does not concern you. Our director, eh? I don't understand. Okay, just be watching now. Just be watching. Immediately he comes in now. The next person is the secretary. That's right. You will not ruin your destiny. Amen. Number two, leaders have strength. Leaders have strength. And you have to focus on their strength. Oh, sorry. I said strength. Leaders have excesses. 
they have excesses. They have weaknesses, they have excesses. And please don't capitalize on their excesses. Don't. That's why a lot of people are disqualified to be leaders. They, what you hear, please look up. What you hear is, yes, she is good. Yes, he is good. But only mefe mefe. Only mefe mefe. Yes, she is good. Yes, he is good. But uh, you can't control him. Leaders have excesses. They have excesses. Now watch it. To so identify a leader, put your eyes on his strength. Put your eyes on his strength. They have weaknesses, they have excesses, but to identify a leader, put your eyes on his strength. I want to stop here. I believe that these few words of mine. If you don't clap well, ooh. hallelujah. If I pass this place now, means you're going maybe by 2 30. Hello? The next topic is what can trap the leader in you? Let's not go there until when we meet again. Are we going to meet again? Yes, sir. I think they said Nankane Kuta. Two of us. What can trap the leader in you? There is a leader in you, but some things trap it. It can manifest. Put your eyes. Both you, both you, listen, look up. Both you, that is a leader. Remove your eyes from your weaknesses, remove your eyes from your excesses. Put your eyes on your strength. Because you have excesses. You have weaknesses. Most times you run away from leadership responsibilities because you feel you have excesses. Hello. A man proposed to a girl for marriage. The girl said, I can't marry you. You know, she declined. She didn't accept the proposal. So after some time, the man now asks the lady, why are you telling me no? Why don't you want to marry me? He said, Oga, you can't control me. I am very stubborn. From the day they gave birth to me, I know that I'm very, <laughs> I know that I'm very stubborn. That's, that's like a weakness or an excess. But it's denying her an opportunity. Come on, am I talking to someone here right now? Please hear me. If you put your eyes on your excesses, your weaknesses, it will deny you of opportunities. Just put your eyes on your strength. And if you are the wise type, you try to work on your weakness, you try to work on your excesses. Is anybody blessed today? Yes, sir. There's a man of God I know in Portacot. I've preached for him. Eh? One thing very outstanding in his life is a great weakness. That is... Hot temper. Hot temper. He can slap an assistant pastor. Not he can. He has been slapping. And they are very loyal. One guy was working with him and uh, so many times he has, you know, bullied the guy, slapped the guy and people call the guy. I said, why not leave? He said, no, 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 no. That guy was the worst guy. He said, no, 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 I'm not leaving. There's something I, I'm looking for. Because the man is highly anointed. Kai. Also, Mole. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's the only way to make you not to take it serious. Hello? They told the guy, come on, resign. For what? He told, 
He told his colleagues, who didn't stay, who left? I'm looking for something. And you know what? He's the only one carrying the mind's grace. He's carrying the same grace without hot temper. So which means he will benefit more. The man is anointed heavily on deliverance. If he stands here like this, people will, bow, people will fall like log of wood. Bow, bow, bow. It's only that guy that carried the grace. And let me say something that will make some sense to you if you care to hear it and understand it. Whatever you focus on, you amplify. If you focus on the person's weakness, you amplify it. Maybe you are married, you have a wife, you have a husband. It is only his weakness you are seeing. You amplify, amplify it. Remove your eyes from the weaknesses and the excesses of the person. Just put your attention on... Huh? On what? On the strength. Hello? I can't hear you. Hello? Put your eyes on the person's strength. Whatever you focus on, you do what? You amplify. So don't put much attention on what the person is not doing well. Also on servants. On servants. On followers. On workers. You may never have anybody work with you if your eyes are always on their weaknesses and their excesses. There's a place sometimes to just remove your eye so that you can walk together. I don't know. Am I talking to somebody here right now? Sometimes just remove your eyes. It is when it is becoming very intentional and very disturbing and threatening to the system by way of encouraging rebellion that you have to rise and stamp on it. Rise to your feet. Is somebody blessed? Yes, I love you all. Mm, it's been one, one, one. Are you blessed today? Yes, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor how blessed you are. Tell your neighbor how blessed you are. I didn't say tell your neighbor I'm blessed. Tell your neighbor how blessed you are. You know, there was a time, people everywhere, people were leaving Winner's Chapel, pastors. The reason being, Bishop Oedipo was hot-tempered. Hot-tempered, pastors were leaving. There were a lot of funny things happening. But you know, God blessed him. God blessed him with a good assistant, a fire extinguisher. When Bishop Oedipo come like this, with his hot temper, give me all of you, give me all of you, give me all of you, Knock him down. Close the door. When he finish and go out, Bishop Abiyo will come. You know, that's our father. And normally, you should know that a father should be angry like that. Everywhere will come down. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. When God blesses you with a good person to compliment you, not somebody that, when the man comes like this, and say, that other one will come. Are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> that one will come and say, Are you still here? You didn't hear what he said to your tents, oh Israel, everybody. God gave him a good balance with Bishop Abiyo. May God bless you with the good people, with the good person. I said, May God bless you with good people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Someone will come and say, did you, did you not hear? He said, I can do without you. He said, You had it. You didn't hear it. He said, we can, do, we can do without us. Let us go. But Bishop Abiyo will always come. What do you expect of a father? <laughs> that man is too wise. Too wise. 
What do you expect of a father? A father that wants his student to do well. Sir, with all due respect, we feel your anger. And we are trying to correct it. We are here to promise you it will never happen again. All of you, raise up your hands, celebrate Jesus, it will never happen again. <laughs> there is no leader that does not have a weakness and what? An excess. I know a man of God, his own weakness, his tamare, his totters. But yet, you'll be surprised. In his stamp, with his stammering tongue, crown. Now, listen, the people that come here by the grace of God is not to be compared to the crowd in his ministry. Yet, he's a stammerer. They'll be patient with him. Patient. They capitalize on his strength. No matter how he tries to say what he wants to say, you see result. You see miracle. That's why the people are there. Have you ever had, maybe where they told a the girl, your husband does not have money, and the girl responds, oh no, have Romeo to her. There is something she saw. Excuse me, am I talking to someone here right now? She's capitalizing on the man's strength. They come to a man, they say, hey, your wife does not know how to cook. Hey, the man said, leave her for me like that. There is a man of God in Abba here. The wife does not know how to cook. That is it's a known thing in ministry. The, man doesn't, the wife does not know how to cook. So what the man just did was, he just banned the wife. I don't want to see you in the kitchen. And for a very long time, they always have a chef. The man who employ people to be cooking. He said, leave my wife for me like that. I love her. There must be something the man is seeing that made the man to say, with her concussionic grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? With her grace to prepare concussion. The man said, leave my wife for me. Father, thank you for increasing my wisdom. Lift your hands and make that prayer right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for increasing my wisdom. Oh, somebody's not making that prayer. Lift your voice. Thank you, my father, for increasing my wisdom. In Jesus' precious name. I can hear you. In Jesus' precious name. <laughs> I'll pray a prayer for you. Stretch your hands. From today, become a role model wherever you go. Yeah. Somebody said as he entered this church, it was two people he was watching. He was watching two persons. And they didn't know. He said two persons caught his attention. And they are the people that made him to begin to serve God the way he serves. He said he was watching this man, MBA, and one of us that is no more here in Abuja, and AZ, the guy called AZ. He said the, the way two of them were serving God, which means unconsciously where you are, somebody is following you. Huh? Unconsciously. You will not lead anybody into a ditch. Please be conscious. Be conscious. Somebody is following you. Admiring you. I don't even know who shared that testimony. Okay, you are the one. He said, two persons who caught his attention in this church. He said, ah, if these people are serving God like this, what am I doing in my life? He said, this man and the other one called AZ, who at that time was the decoration department HOD. These people can dive into anything called service. And that's how also you don't know that 
Somebody is also following you, learning all the bad things you have. Learning all the bad things. Now make this simple prayer as we close. Take the last offering and then we we'll close. My father, I remove my eyes. My father, remove my eyes from the weaknesses and excesses of my leader. Will you make that prayer right now? <laughs> remove my eyes from my own excesses. Huh? Do you have excesses? Yes. Do you have weaknesses? Yes. Remove my eyes also from my own excesses and my weaknesses. Open your mouth and pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Remove my eyes. Take it off. Oh, Jesus. Remove my eyes. In Jesus' precious name. A man of God. <laughs> a man of God. Said that hey, my pastor, eh, my pastor can eat. The man of God was saying about his pastor. My pastor can eat. And they couldn't demand Bribu. You can a real king on a real on a real butter and car. You can't get a real butter and car. Every time you are given the privilege of assets, choose what to see. Somebody again they they now. Every time you are given the privilege of access, choose what to see. Oh, what a service. I'm blessed today. Hello? Choose what to see. Hello? Because you see so many things. But choose what to see. That is, choose what to give attention. Choose what to give attention. There is a boy who is like the P of his pastor. The other day we were, I had something with his pastor. So I called the boy and I said to the boy, did your pastor say anything concerning what I did with him? You know what the boy said? He said, that's not my business, sir. Whatever you did with my pastor is not my business at all. That's a trained man. That's what? A trained man. He, said, he reminded me. He said, sir, it's not my business. Yes. He didn't answer in the negative. He did not answer in the positive. He just said, sir, it's not my business. He's your friend. It's not my business. You both settle yourselves. <laughs> That's a train summer. Oh, many potent father. Do you know why I'm singing this song now? The Holy Ghost gave me a signal. Somebody is being imparted by the Holy Ghost. There is something I carry that you will get after now. Yeah. There is something I'm enjoying that you admire that will become very practical in your life now. Yeah. What, what I, I just gave to you now is the law, one of the laws of impartation. And the funny thing about impartation is that God is the umpire. God is the umpire of impartation. He chooses who gets what. I may call you and say, because I like you, just come. Let me lay my hands on you, carry my anointing. Now lie. As I laid hands on you, they will not make you carry. It is the one who God sees his heart. He said, this one's heart is good. That person may not even be close with the man of God. Pow! He passes the pattern. 
Omni Potent Father of mercy and of grace. Thou art well. In this service today, there is something I carry, I enjoy. That somebody will wear like clothes in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, I, I, I've come to a place of carefulness when I'm ministering. Because I've discovered that whatever I say, God honors it. You must hear testimony. It's been a long time I did this. It was just in the minister's conference I did it recently. Long time, there was a time every time I come to church I ask you to do it. But it's been a long time. I don't know whether two or three or four years or five years I did it last. And now there is a signal to do it. Stretch your hands. Open your eyes. Stretch your hands. Whatever you like here now, ask God for it. Whatever you admire. Whatever that you know that God is doing in my life and you admire it. Now wait, wait. Remember. Who among you will his child ask for an egg and you give him a stone? Who among you will his child ask for bread you give you something else. Just know that it is what you ask for you get. Forget my weakness. Forget my, my essence. Forget it. That thing. Come on now. Come on now. Hear this. There is a little grace on this life. There is a little grace on this life. Stretch your hands right now. Make sure your eyes is not closed. Ask for it. Until I stop you. Don't stop praying. Cry out your heart. That's how to get God. Open your mouth and make the prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Is that the way you are praying? Lift up your voice. Cry to God. The Lord hears prayers.
your hands. Stretch your hands. You are the empire, the umpire. You are the umpire, the umpire. You are the umpire. You are the umpire of impartation. You know those whose hearts are right. My father, I did nothing and you gave it to me. My father, because they have expressed their love for what you did and what you are doing in my life and they've asked you for it. Father, within seven days, today, let there be a practical replication. My father, as they remain loyal, as they remain loyal to this vessel, let today mark the day of total transformation in their life in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you asked for, but he has had you. The gates of nations shall open to you. This anointed shall be practically seen upon your life. Men shall be obedient to you. <laughs> In spite of your storms, persecutions, you will remain standing in the name of Jesus Christ. The great shall desire you for favor in the name of Jesus Christ. You will have results in what you are doing. Hey! Stretch your hand. Receive children. Receive children. Amen. After this service, your path will cross with your life partner. Amen. It's possible you have asked for something that I'm not even aware of. Today, the Lord grant you what you have asked for. May divine wisdom be your own and portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, stretch your hands. I'm very loud. Your name will spread abroad. As far as you remain loyal to this vessel, Bishop Oyelepo has never come to this church. I've been beyond me a few times, but see the way I talk about them. I doubt if some winners' pastors talk about them the way I talk. I doubt if some of their pastors under them talk about them like I talk about them. It is what you respect you attract. Stretch your hands. You will never live without a testimony. Lecres Ebranis Yatale. As I knelt down, the Lord spoke to me. He said, You can see it. That, some, that there is something I've given you which others don't have. Today, Mount Abar, 
Igaroshe. There shall be peace in your home. You will become the dream of others. The Lord bless you with good health. Bless you with strength. Ah, yeah. The Lord bless you financially in the name of Jesus Christ. struggle to get Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are sure you receive, let your thanksgiving be as loud as thunder. Open your mouth and thank him right now. Father, we thank. 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 